Cognitive Approach, Psychology of Personal Construct by George Kelly. To give you a brief background about this theory, it is also known as Meta Theory, which means Theory of Theories. Si George Kelly, siya yung kilalang misinterpreted or misunderstood theories in the field of psychology. Kasi nga, may pagka-complex yung theory niya. And to give you a brief background about Kelly, George Alexander Kelly was born on April 28, 1905 in a farm in Kansas. Just like the other psychologists, he is not also originally a psychology major. Yung degree niya is a physics and mathematics. He is also a member of debate team, which means he has a lot of knowledge about social issues or problems about the world. And George Kelly has master's degree in educational sociology and a minor in labor relations and sociology. He got his PhD in psychology with a dissertation about speech disability. And during Great Depression, if you are not familiar with Great Depression, it is the time kung saan lugmok ang ekonomiya ng Amerika. Just like this time, pandemic. Ganon din ang nararanasan nila noon. It is the time when he shifted his focus on psychotherapy. Siguro parang calling na din niya na very timely nga, kaya doon na shift yung focus niya that time. Kelly is also known as man of many and or diverse interests. So according sa educational background niya, marami na siyang field na napagdaanan. Hindi lang soft science, pati hard science. So kaya siya kilalang man of many interests. Moving on, let's talk about Kelly's philosophical position. Sa tanong na is human behavior based on reality or on people's perception of reality, Kelly's answer would be, bo would be both. He rejects radical behaviorism and extreme phenomenology. Nireject niya yung radical behaviorism ni Skinner na nagsasabing kung ano daw yung nararanasan mo sa environment, kung ano daw yung mga reinforcement na nararanasan mo sa environment, ayun na ang reality mo. Nireject niya din yung kay Adler na nagsasabing kung ano daw yung interpretation mo sa reality, ayun na ang reality mo. Bagkos naniniwala siya na parehas. Naniniwala siya doon sa dalawa. Sabi niya, people have personal constructs or ways of explaining and interpreting events, which is the key to predicting behavior. So, ayun nga. Ang mga tao daw ay may kanya-kanyang personal construct on how we view things, on how we view how the world works. So, another philosophical position of Kelly is naniniwala siyang ang tao daw ay parang mga scientist. Whenever we decide to do something, we act like a scientist. We observe, we ask questions, we, formu we formulate hypothesis, and then we test them, and lastly, we draw conclusion. Pero, a person's conclusion, like those any scientist, are not fixed or final, meaning, nababago pa or pwede pang mabago. Kelly was hopeful that people individually will find better ways of restructuring their lives through imagination and foresight, sabi dito. Another philosophical position of Kelly, syempre kung ang tao ay parang mga scientist, ang scientist din ay tao lamang. Sabi dito, if people can be seen as scientists, then scientists can also be seen as people. Kung baga, ang scientist, katulad ng tao, ay nagkakamali. Then, meron din mga backlogs, drawbacks, or biases. Si Kelly, naniniwala din siya na mayroon tayong constructive alternativism. Yes, we have objective realities, pero meron din tayong alternatives. Pwede nating tignan itong objective realities na to into different perspectives. Moving on, let's talk about personal constructs. Sabi dito, personal construct is one's way of seeing how things or people are alike and yet different from other things. Katulad nga ang sabi ko kanina, ang personal construct is our own way of how we view or how we interpret how the world works or about the things. Kung paano natin nakikita ang pagkakaiba at pagkakaparehas ng mga bagay-bagay sa paligid natin. Kelly's philosophy assumes that people's interpretation of a unified, ever-changing world constitute the reality. All people continually create their own view of the world. 
Kelly said that we look at the world through transparent patterns that fit over the realities of which the world is composed and these patterns are called personal constructs. Now let's talk about the basic postulate. Sabi dito, the basic postulate assumes that a person's processes are psychologically channelized by the ways in which that person anticipates events. Dahil may pagka-precise si Kelly, dinefine niya yung ibang term and phrases dito. Sabi niya, channelize is defined as moving. So as a human, as an organism, we are moving. And upon moving, it has a purpose. It is our way in which we anticipate events. We want to know what will happen next. In short, um... Basic postulate ng personal construct is that we create construct, we create theories to anticipate events. And this basic postulate is supported by corollaries. And these 11 corollaries, corollaries by Kelly, is related to anticipating events. Now, let's move on to the first corollary, which is the construction corollary. Corollary or the similarities among repeated events. In this corollary, in anticipating events, we tend to look or find similarities among events. So, pag nag-anticipate tayo ng mga bagay-bagay, we tend to look sa mga pagkakapare-parehas and we tend to group them. For example is, pag may taong tingin ng tingin sa'yo, akala mo lagi may gusto sa'yo. So, susunod, pag may tumingin sa'yo yung ibang tao, Ang akala mo pa din, may gusto sa'yo. Now, let's move on to the second corollary, which is the individuality corollary, or individual differences in interpreting events. Uh, lagi natin tatandaan na this corollary is in the context of anticipating events. Ha? So, this second corollary is quite simple or obvious because it says here that Every individual have different ways of construing the reality. Nakaka-experience man tayo ng iba't ibang events, but we may construe it in a different way or level. For example is reacting to a harsh harsh joke. So, kung sa atin, titik lang natin ito as joke talaga, hindi tayo nasasaktan. Sa iba, pwedeng maging insulto, insulto sa ang dating sa kanila, pwedeng maging insulto. Meron tayong iba't iba kasing triggering point. So, yun yung individuality corollary. The third one is the organization corollary or the relationships among constructs. So, it basically means that may relationship yung iba't ibang constructs ng tao. Marami tayong construct, it varies, iba-iba. So, among those constructs, Meron tayong priority sa mga construct na yun. Hindi pwedeng lahat priority natin meron ng isa. So, we tend to organize them. And now, let's move on to the fourth corollary, which is the dichotomy corollary. In anticipating events, we tend to think or see of our construct as dichotomous. Meaning, our construct or our way of anticipating events is very black or white. Meaning, we need to choose between the two. And, dito napapasok ngayon yung pang limang corollary, which is the choice corollary. Siyempre, kung merong dalawang pagpipilian, meron tayong freedom to, to choose. And that is the choice corollary. Now, let's move on to the sixth corollary which is the range corollary. So dahil nga complicated na or masyado nang broad, malawak ang mga ang mga construct natin, dito na papasok yung range. Ibig sabihin, may limit na in a certain or a specific situation. Halimbawa nito is yung personal construct natin about academic. So sa Sa pag-aaral, hindi natin pwedeng ihalo ang construct natin about relationship. Kasi pag inhalo natin yon mayroong isang compromise at magiging unhealthy na. Hindi mo naman pwedeng ihalo yung construct mo sa relationship sa pag-aaral, ba So, ayun ang 
page corollary. Now, let's move on to the seventh corollary, which is the experience corollary or the exposure to new experiences. We also depend on our experiences. Our personal construct is basically the result of our experiences. And an example nito is our academic construct. So, kung pinalaki ka ng magulang mo na lagi nilang ituturo na mag-aral kang mabuti kasi ganito, ganyan, ganyan, madadala mo yun in the future. Ang, magi, ang mabubuong construct mo is katulad din noon. So, based on experiences. And now, let's move on to the eighth corollary which is the modulation corollary. Siyempre, kung masyado ng road at dahil at sa experience na siya galing, we always have experiences on new things in our life. Experiences are like new data. Example is may kumontra sa'yo. So, pag may kumontra sa'yo, machi-challenge ka, mapapaisip ka na bakit niya ako kinakontra, may mali ba sa kontra ko. So, doon na mababago. Doon na papasok yung modulation corollary na modulate na yung kontra mo. So, that is modulation corollary. Now, let's move on to the fragmentation corollary. So, pag may, kum may kontrahan na nanaganap, doon na papasok yung fragmentation or competition. Pag, nag pag nagkaroon ng kontrahan, dito na papasok yung fragmentation corollary. According to Kelly, hindi lahat ng personal construct ay applicable or compatible sa construct na mayroon ng ibang tao. And upon experiencing those, meron din tayong commonality corollary. At yun yung pang sampung corollary according to Kelly. Commonality corollary. Sabi dito, we have similar construct with other people, lalo na sa mga taong merong kaparehas nating background or pinagdadaanan. Lastly is the sociality corollary or the interpersonal relationship. Sabi dito, nababago yung personal construct natin by doing social activity. Halimbawa, nito is pag may bago kayong kaklase at usap-usapan na masungit daw siya, so mababago lang yung personal construct mo about her pag nakahalubilo mo siya, pag nakausap mo na siya. Ah, hindi pala siya masungit. Parang ganun. So, that is the 11 corollaries. Now, let's move on to the application of personal construct theory. The first one is abnormal behavior. So, we are like good scientists. Pag hindi maganda yung personal construct natin, we tend to change it in a good construct. Unlike unhealthy people. Sabi dito, unhealthy people, on the other hand, stubbornly cling to outdated to outdated personal construct, fearing validation of any new constructs that would upset their present comfortable view of the world. So, that is the application on abnormal behavior. Now, let's move on to the psychotherapy, which is one application also of personal construct. In treating those abnormal behavior by of unhealthy people or unhealthy people who stubbornly cling to outdated personal construct, dito papasok yung psychotherapy. It is how you treat those abnormal behavior. Merong ginawa si Kelly na fixed role therapy na kung saan tatanggap ka or magtitake up ka ng role on another sets of construct with your therapist. And dito ititest kung mag-work ba sa'yo yung role na yon at matutulungan ka ba niyang mabago yung mga construct mo. So, another application of personal construct theory is the rep test. Sabi dito, the rep test is 
another procedure used by Kelly, both inside and outside therapy. It was the role construct repertory or rep test. The purpose of the rep test is to discover ways in which people construe significant people in their lives. So that's it. That's our, the application of personal construct theory. Now let's move on to the reflections on Kelly's theory. Sabi dito, Kelly developed a unique and radical personality theory that did not derive from from or build on another theory. So, unique talaga ang theory ni Kelly. Sabi din dito, Kelly's system has been criticized on several points. It focuses on intellectual and rational aspects of human functioning to the exclusion of emotional aspects. Kelly's image of a person rationally constructing the present and future forming and testing hypothesis and making prediction as the basis for behavior does not coincide with the everyday experiences of clinical psychologists who see more extreme example of human behavior. So, medyo may pagka out of the world talaga tong theory, theory ni Kelly kaya medyo criticized din siya. So, that's it.